Welcome to our service of morning prayer on this Friday, the 23rd of August. Let's just spend a moment preparing our hearts and minds as we come to pray together. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, May we rejoice in this day you have made, as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from 2 Samuel, chapter 16, starting at verse 1. When David had passed a little beyond the summit, Zeba, the servant of Mephisabeth, sent, met him with a couple of donkeys saddled, carrying 200 loaves of bread, 100 bunches of raisins, 100 of summer fruits, and one skin of wine. The king said to Zeba, why have you bought these? Zeba answered, the donkeys are for the king's household to ride, the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine is for those to drink who faint in the wilderness. The king said, and where is your master's son? Zeba said to the king, he remains in Jerusalem, for he said, today the house of Israel will give me back my grandfather's kingdom. Then the king said to Zeba, all that belonged to Mephithesesh is now yours. Zeba said, I do obeisance. Let me and let me find favour in your sight, my lord the king. When King David came to Barium, a man of the family of the house of Saul came out, whose name was Shimhai son of Gera. He came out cursing. He threw stones at David and all of the servants of King David. Now all of the people and all the warriors were on his right and on his left. Shimei shouted and while he cursed, out, out murderers, scoundrel, the Lord has avenged on all of you the blood of the house of Saul in whose place you have reigned and the Lord has given the kingdom into the hand of your son Absalom. See, disaster has overtaken you, for you are a man of blood. Then Abshai, son of Zariah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Let me go over and shake, take off his head. But the king said, What, what have I to do with you, your sons? Zeruah, if he is cursing because the lord has said to him, Curse David, who, who then shall say, Why have you done so? David said to Abishai and to all his servants, My own son seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjamite? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on my distress and the Lord will repay me good with, pay me with good for his cursing of me today. So David and his men went out on the road, while Shimei went along on the hillside opposite him and cursed as he went, throwing stones and flinging dust at him. The king and all the people who were with him arrived weary at the Jordan, and there he refreshed himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Short reflection then on our reading from To Samuel by Gregory Cameron. They say that you find out who your friends are when and when you experience great need. Here, David is the one who has fallen on hard times. Zeba remains a friend, but many of his old rivals from the house of Saul seize their chance for payback or mock the king's misfortune. Mephithesesh shows no gratitude and Shimei takes the opportunity to gloat. The good example of David remains steadfast, however. Faced with the anger of his loyal followers who want to take revenge, David refuses to react violently and continues to put his trust in God. In great need or great fortune, the the truth of our nature often slips out. The famous poem, If, by Rudyard Kipling, seems to speak into this situation. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same. But perhaps the scriptures speak even more powerfully. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. 
David becomes the example of the steadfast suffering servant here. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. That's from 1 Peter chapter 5. This is not so much the stoicism that Kipling commends, but rather it is a trust in God, the sure hope that in life there can be no greater source of comfort and strength than in placing ourselves in God's hands. We say the Benedictus together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let us pray. High and holy God, robed in majesty, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray that you will bring justice, faith and salvation to all peoples. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You chose us in Christ to be your people and to be the temple of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will fill your church with vision and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Your Spirit enables us to cry, Abba, Father, affirms that we are fellow heirs with Christ and pleads for us in our weakness. We pray for all who are in need or distress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In the baptism and birth of Jesus, you have opened heaven to us and enabled us to share in your glory the joy of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit from before the world was made. May your whole church, living and departed, come to joyful resurrection in your city of light. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which uh, our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits of the and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's been a joy to pray with you as ever. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again soon. God bless. <laughs>